is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 74 of On Shape. We're going to be making our carabiner pin clip here. This is part five of the video. This one, we're going to specifically make the geometry for the hinge to rest on. Now, I've seen a couple of videos already, but I wanted to push the limits of what we were able to do. So we're going to make all this geometry only using one sketch. At this point, you should be at this point in the video or making your own part in the videos. Uh, so you should have this clip almost all the way completed except for that geometry. So let's get rolling. We're going to click on sketch and I'm going to use the plane that goes through the carabiner clip. For me, that's going to be this front plane right here. Right click, hit view normal sketch plane. And we're going to use this sketch right here, sketch 14, for everything we're going to do. So let's throw in some of that geometry. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit use project and we're gonna project this bottom edge of the clip. We're gonna draw a line that's horizontal. Make sure that those dotted lines are going in there. And then we're gonna finish out that triangle. The hypotenuse of that triangle is gonna be 0 0.14. Oh, looks like I didn't click on that correctly. So let's do coincide it. Let's fix that. There we go. And the dimension between this dot and this dot of our leg, the shorter leg, is 0 0.12. Just to double check, make sure everything's good. It's nice shaded area. We're also going to draw in one line that's going to kind of cut or bisect that triangle a little bit, and that's 0 0.095. And you're going to see why we're going to do this here in a second. We're going to take this profile and reference it twice. Let's do that. So while that clip is inactive, we're gonna hit extrude, make it active, and then hit remove. So this allows us to remove the section for that hinge to initially rest on, but it's missing the rib, the part that's gonna go in the middle. So to do that, we're gonna take sketch 14 and make it active again, and then re-extrude that triangle. It's going to be symmetric again and 0 0.05 and there's our rib for the foot using one sketch twice. Let's use that sketch some more. So I'm going to double click on sketch 14, right click hit view normal 2 and we're also going to section view this carabiner clip. That way I'm referencing the correct ellipse on the inside not the slightly smaller one on the outside. Okay, let's do that. Now let's click on Use Project, and we're going to make sure we choose this ellipse right here. Now this ellipse does go all the way around, okay, and we're going to do Offset of this ellipse 0 0.027. It's just a very, very small offset. There is going to be some problem with the geometry that comes in here but we're just going to trim it away. So trim, trim. That does not affect our profiles from that original extrusion. If it does, we'll fix those here in a second. Okay, so we got our ellipse right here. This is going to be mostly the cutout for the spring to rest in the back. So we're going to draw a line to go connect those two ellipses. And the distance between that and the bottom is going to be 0.7. Looks good so far. We're gonna draw on a rectangle here. This is gonna be the cutout for the hinge point or the, the pin to go through. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle, but here's something I'm gonna do specifically. I'm gonna hopefully zoom in, you can see a little bit better. I'm going to draw a rectangle that has no automatic constraints. So kind of drew it arbitrarily off to the left. And we're going to find the center point of that ellipse of that major axis So the bottom of the ellipse we drew is going to meet with the bottom right corner of that square. If I go ahead and hit inactive on that clip, you can see that these are all still grayed out. We can actually even go ahead and trim this up a little bit. That way this doesn't become a problem later on. Okay, let's throw in some other dimensions while we're here and it's clean. That's going to be 0 0.3. And this is going to be 
0 0.4. Everything looks good. Let's keep going. Let's trim up a little bit more on this inside. And we're going to add in a circle. The circle is going to be where the pin actually is going to cut in through at. That's 0 0.06 diameter. Its distance, let's bring that clip back in. The distance between the center and this edge point is 0 0.12. And the distance between the center and this bottom edge right here is 0 0.64. Things kind of look good. I think, I think we're looking good. Everything looks fully constrained. There's no blue lines, fully dimensioned. Let's hit the green check mark and see what we can do with this sketch. Let's go ahead and hit extrude. And I'm going to remove this square block, let's do that, and the center. It's locking up on me. Internet's been running a little slow recently. And we're back. Sorry about that. Let's extrude these two circles. I said the circle and the square. And let's bring clip back in. That way we can remove, do a symmetric removal. And that is going to be 0 0.15 on that. Let's try that again. That's going to be 0 0.15. There we go. Looks a little good. Looks like I'm, I've got a floating clip piece right here. Let's actually just go ahead and delete that. Bink. Looks good to me. Okay. Let's continue on with some more removals. Let's remove Let's do extrude. We still have sketch 14 active. This center circle is going to be symmetrical all the way through as a remove. Looks good. And then we're also going to do one last extrusion. I need this, this part where the spring is going to rest in. So let's make that inactive. Let's click on that profile. Make the clip active again. Remove. Symmetric. And then that is going to be 0 0.02. And that should be looking pretty smooth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this. I lied. Hold it. I didn't finish. We got one last part to do, and that is this small taper here. We're going to go back to sketch 14. And here's where this is not necessarily the best way to design this part, but it still went with the challenge of doing this all in one sketch. I'm going to draw another rectangle up here. And it's going to have a couple of odd dimensions. These dimensions allowed me to do exactly what I plan to do when it comes to doing that tapered edge at the very end. We're going to draw a rectangle with a width of 0 0.18, a height of 0 0.03, and a distance between is going to be 0 0.02. From the edge, it's going to be 0 0.125, and watch this magic. So we had to get this tapered edge right here, and I thought, man, so I was going with that challenge of how can I get that tapered edge with only one extrusion? I was like, oh, let's try this out. So we're going to extrude again from sketch 14, symmetrical, but give it a draft. And we're going to keep bumping up that draft angle until we're happy with the slant it produces. And I don't know about you folks, but I'm happy with that slant. All right, there we go. That's the true ending of making our carabiner clip uh, uh, geometry just using only one sketch. All right, you guys are awesome. Stay awesome. I'm pretty sure if you're watching these videos, you're watching them back-to-back -back in series for a class project. 
Sorry y'all listen to my voice drown on for a little while, but hopefully these videos have been helpful. If you need any help, feel free to throw it down in the comment section. Please like and subscribe to these videos if you've been watching them and you at least in some way appreciate them. Make sure to share the love. Alright, I will see you guys in 